So we're live. This we're is live. Not live. We are live. We uh, we're gonna probably BS a little bit here to collect some viewers. Today's live stream is gonna be a little fun. We're gonna dive into some interesting topics, but we want to keep it light. World's yeah. in a serious place, but life's so bright here. We needed our Ray Bans. I know. So it's very important. You know, yeah. when you're a lighting designer like me, who has a light sensitivity, you need you need your Ray Bans. And Under I'm all these studio lights up. I'm just trying to look like Pitbull with my new <laughs> COVID cut. So, uh, yeah, so clearly today is going to be a lot more relaxed. Um, we've, the past couple of last streams, we've touched on serious topics, but we're over that now because we yeah. want to have a little fun. Um, we'll get back to serious, I'm sure, but at this, at this moment, we're having, yes, we're keep it lighthearted. Keep it lighthearted this time. And so, uh, anyway, for today's live stream, we will focus on a couple topics. One being how to set up your laser projector in, uh, the three most common operational modes, um, streaming mode, console mode, and auto mode. And we're gonna touch a little bit on some safety related topics relating to that, offering some insight on how to safely set up your laser show in accordance with primarily yeah. US regulations. Um, and this at a later correct. date, we're gonna, we're gonna have a video discussing some of the compliance and regulatory elements uh, that go along with that. Yeah, um, so the, those of you who subscribe to our YouTube channel have probably already seen those videos, um, but we, Basically, they're kind of like a beginner set of series. Yeah. Basically, you can go from um, opening the projector for the first time to having output, whether you're on just a PC, if you want to use a console, or if you have an auto mode application. Yep. Um, you, those videos cover those completely. And then also the extra video is that safety video, which I know a lot of people have been wishing for to yep. exist. Um, we worked um, kind of with the FDA to make sure that we qualify and make sure that yeah, the, the, what this covers is on the on-site safety to make sure that people who are brand new to lasers get the that's exactly information right. they need the, to uh, do it The FDA wants to see training packages included with the projector. So we um, we had a meeting with Will Calhoun uh, while he was down here at the ILDA conference, kind of laid out the framework for mm -hmm. those. Um, big shout out to John Ward. John was, uh, he's our compliance manager here. He really um, helped, helped guide a lot of the video production and stuff like that. And um, with these the scripts and yeah. making sure the information was correct and accurate. And so all this stuff too now will be included. Anytime you get a projector, you're going to get these training materials included with uh, with the system as well, just to make sure you have a good foundation to uh, to build upon. So um, yeah, and um, there's also going to be a supplemental video that's coming soon-ish. We're you know we got to make sure it's accurate um, for paperwork. Yes. Right. So the safety video that's been released is completely related to on-site safety elements that are actually relevant to make the safe sh the show safe. Um, but we will be writing and having a video for the paperwork side of things um, for the United States because they're basically the and, the and that's big gonna. Ones I mean, I share. see. I hear. I get a lot of questions from people asking about that stuff, right. um, asking how to file FAA, uh, asking mm -hmm. just about the variance processes in general. So. The video is really just going to serve to demystify a lot of these processes, mm -hmm. um, and and you'll get it straight from uh, from. I mean, Lyra, you're an LSO. You, you deal with this stuff all the time, so yeah. And uh, yeah, we basically it's kind of do, we want to give you the information that you need yep. to um, do a safe show, both physically, Com which compliant. we have here, and also legally as well. And compliant. Yep. Um, so. There's the and we've kind of separated them just to not get boring with the safety yeah. video because obviously paperwork is is very important but is exactly less glamorous. Than, so uh, so keeping on a positive note, you know we kind of always want to be sharing positive news. Um, been seeing some awesome stuff from you guys as as users out at home showing some uh, some laser soap content. So we've had Austin Smith, big shout out to Austin. Um, the toilet paper laser mapping, absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah, that's, that was one that's of a kind. Yeah. Uh, um, Tobias hey, you know. Geber from Germany showing out some awesome shows. Um, Moshi from Sar Lasers in Israel. If you guys haven't seen, he did a beautiful display um, over there, just kind of promoting some safe practices and stuff like that. It was a, a public event. Um, Jaroslaw from Visual Sensations in Poland doing the same thing, just promoting some stay home, stay safe messaging. Yep. Oh, and you know, the really, really awesome, cool one was um, Laseronics. They did it on the yeah. pyramids of Gaza. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah, that big was shout out to Laseronics. Great, that was a super really cool Kyle show. Kyle and uh, Usri over there. Yeah, and they it's, it's super cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's another thing is like people are starting to do a lot of these kind of like awareness things. And, yeah, and it's if you can do it safely and you get permission, you know, um, that's it's, a, it's definitely a cool thing that people are. It's doing exactly. What I mean, you've products. got the technology sitting at home. Rather than keeping it locked up in a flight case, bust your laser out. Go do something fun. Go promote awareness for for a topic or a cause you care about, and uh, and share it in the community. Yeah, and make sure obviously you're doing it with permission. With permission um, and safely. But, yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that you could do and 
Um, I don't think many people right now would would no. have a reason to say no. Yeah, exactly. Um, and especially since it's it's something that is you know really cool and something interesting. I, I to mean, launch. Miguel. Um, so Miguel, he's one of our, our clients from Portugal, a company called Laser Effect. Um, he was doing this over there. He got featured on the local news for for what he was doing to kind of promote um, COVID nineteen awareness. Yeah. So big shout out to you, Miguel, and thanks for sharing that story as well. But the main point is just you know if you have the ability to and you can do it safely, be active. You know, share in the community. All of us are sitting at home right now, um, safely practicing social distancing and stuff like that. But uh, it's good to touch base and collaborate with other laserists and share what you're doing uh, just to keep busy. So um, so a couple other uh, just discussion points there. Internally, we've got some new features in Beyond that uh, Alexei and Lyra have really been working a lot on related yeah. to Beambrush. If you want to kind of discuss that a little uh, bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so Beambrush progress is moving along pretty great. Um, and we've, we've got it implemented in Preview Window and in the queue, so you can see them in, in Beyond. Um, we've added, I think there's probably up to 10 effects now. Mm -hmm. We've got our settings. Um, so there is, it's, there's a couple things, you know, like with color, like you, you sometimes need to change a fade curve. We've added a couple things that are, it's not specifically like that, but it's a couple settings that help you optimize. And if, if for some reason, um, you know, if someone threw it off a truck and yeah. Something got out of alignment. It can help you fix that on the fly without having to go and ratchet it in, um, and and implementing it into Beyond and obviously checking for bugs. There's yep. a couple of um, super duper special uh, people who are really really close to us who yep. we're sending it to next, who are going to be able to bug test it further um, and play with it and also give us some good feedback. Get some feedback. We're keeping it pretty yep. small for now because yep. we want to. Um, it's still pretty. Early on, it's not it's, yeah, it's not still, a beta phase; it's an alpha phase. Alpha, still. exactly right. Um, so we're trying to keep it to people, just a few people to keep it overall, because there is going to be a, there's obviously whenever you add new features software, there's bugs. Yep. So we want to try and nail down some of the big stuff and get some of those, um, and also the build of Beyond is very much not production ready. So we want to make sure that the people exactly. who do get it um, are using just it like just the last purchase. release that that you were really. Uh, Critical right. and help them put that up. Yeah, we want so it to like be organized with the, and documented. Right. When and all we do stuff. the update with this in it, there's also going to be a couple other things, things we probably can or cannot talk about. But um, we want to make sure that when we do a production update like that, the update is comes with manuals, video education, um, and well awareness of when that update comes out. Exactly. So we're we're not pushing these things publicly um, for that reason. Um, and I know I'm sure people want to play with this feature. But we want to make sure that we want to make it we, sure it's ready for you guys. So it's that ready when, for when you have the tools; they're products. stable, they're working, um, and, and they perform the way you'd expect them to from Correct. a Pangolin product. Yeah. So, and also we can have um, like education out. So, exactly. So you you can learn how to use the feature when it comes out the way that we intended it to, which means you'll get the most out of it. Exactly. Um, so that is coming along gr really nicely. We're actually about to. Um, we finally got some like manufacturing bits for like the proper to build them up the way they are, where we want to build them um, from instead of 3D printed parts. Yeah, so, so I mean, we're, we're going to be right now, putting in a couple more in our projectors, so we'll have a few we're more We're going to have some, some uh, basically an internal fleet of beam brush projectors. Right. We'll have them in our showroom. We'll have them available for demo so that when the time is right, you guys will be able to actually uh, try a beam brush system out mm -hmm. um, inside of a projector um, built from the ground up. Big shout out to our friends at Kavant. They've, uh, Victor Dubeck, um, he's an optical engineer over there, PhD. And he's been pivotable, um, a, a huge, a huge influence in helping build this uh, together with Bill and the team. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have those demo systems ready in uh, in a couple more months, and um, we'll we'll let everybody know once they're uh, they're available. Um, another little data point that we're working on is um, we've partnered with Kavant to uh, to build a new line of low cost lasers. Uh, we're gonna be calling these Unities, um, and they're gonna be available from 1.7 watt all the way up to 30 watt. Um, we're going to be releasing the system, the lower power systems from 1.7 watt to 3 watt first. Um, they're nearly done with FDA certification now, so uh, just keep an eye out for that. But basically, it's um, the whole point with this new Unity line is to help clients get access to a professionally manufactured projector um, that's overseen by Pangolin and Kavant together as, as a group um, at a more affordable price point. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll be seeing uh, you'll be seeing those um, online and stuff here pretty soon as well. Um, Great for stuff like home studio programming. Yeah, home studio or, pro programming. Um, um, you know, if you're just getting started with lasers and you, you wanted a quality product but you weren't sure sure where to go, these are going to be roughly twenty to thirty percent less um, than a classic fixture. So, mm -hmm. 
really aggressively priced, but top quality components inside and all designed and manufactured by us uh, together. So, um, and then with that being said, one of the other things we want to encourage you guys to do is, um, as we were sharing earlier, a lot of clients are just doing these local events in their areas like Miguel, like Javier from Pira Laser, uh, just projecting um, positive messaging, using lasers as a digital signage tool. Um, and so we would encourage you guys to, you know, if you, if you have access to local project planners in your area or government authorities, let them know what you can do with the laser. Let them know like, hey, I can use my projector to promote a positive message out there or to promote a safety message or something like that. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that a laser is much more than a, a tool for aerial beams. It's, it's also a digital signage tool. So just an idea to help you perhaps drum up some business while mm -hmm. things are slow or just use your laser in a novel way to spread a positive message. Yeah, for sure. And it's, and it's you know, with even if you're, um, you know, pretty new to lasers or, or you're more of like a quick user, quick show user, I mean, quick text, boom. Boom, done. Right, you know, yep. um, you could pretty pretty easily get a message out there um, without needing to do too much programming. And exactly. And be pretty quick with it, so. Um, or if you, you know, you get real fancy with it too and create yeah. animations and whatnot, but um, I, it's something that I think all users of, of um, Quick Show or Beyond can do, utilize those tools and do it. Um, yeah, and in it's their just a, just a way to stay busy during what we all know is a relatively slow time. Right. You know, and um, like the mantra kind of goes that we've been trying to push is, um, you know, you want to stay safe, you want to stay positive, and you want to stay educated. And mm -hmm. uh, this kind of hits all three of them on the head. So, well, let's dive into today's live stream. Um, again, we're going to talk about the three most common modes for controlling and setting up your laser. Uh, the first one being streaming mode. Next one being lighting console mode, and the third being auto mode. And, yeah, so um, can I just... Uh, yeah, break it, break it down. So uh, if you want, we'll just show you this too quickly. If you want to go up to my uh, computer screen really quick. Um, these videos that we're going to basically kind of do a rough overview of here, um, we have the safety video, we have the uh, c console, uh, auto mode, and streaming mode. These videos are live on YouTube. You can go check them out. They are... Um, Basically, like I said earlier, they are. You could follow these videos from the first time you open up your projector to getting output, and it'll get you through, get you started, and give you all the information you need to start. And then, of course, a safety video will show you how to do that safely mm -hmm. and cover all of those topics related to that. Um, and so, those are on our YouTube channel now. They're live, so you can go take a look at those after this stream. Um, and uh, never hurts to add knowledge, right? So um, exactly, that's the whole point of these videos. Yeah. Is if you, uh, if you are new to lasers, you know, we, we often see a, a tour or a festival or, or what have you. They'll need lasers last minute. And sometimes they, 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 they're new to lasers. They don't really know all the ins and outs of them. They're, they might not be an experienced laserist. Right. A creative and director's like, get us lasers. Yeah. Like, well, okay. Uh. Um, okay. I got to get this job done. <laughs> so the whole point is that out of the box, these videos are going to get you up and running safely in a quick and efficient manner. So, um, so the first mode that we'll kind of talk about is what we internally at Pangolin have tried to call streaming mode. And this is uh, active live control from your computer going to the projector. Mm -hmm. And generally with FB4 now, it's, um, and Calvin, if you want to show the back of the projector here, it's going to be over Ethernet. Mm -hmm. Looks like our camera might be a little off. How How's that, that looking, Calvin? All right, good, awesome. Perfect. So now you got a, um, a good back backup view of, uh, this is a Kavant Club Max. And I want to point something out here uh, real quick is the FB4 that's inside of a Club Max. Uh, we've worked with Kavant. It's proprietary to these projectors. So it's going to be quite a bit different than a normal FB4 you would see in a conventional laser. You're going to notice we have network in and out, uh, ArtNet in and out, DMX in and out. We have ILD if you want to use it. Most people, most people aren't. Um, you're going to notice we have power in and out and we have um, our e-stop. And... Um, this version of FB4 also has a tool called color balance mode that's going to allow you to automatically balance your colors across all the projectors in your setup. So rather than having to do all the color palette training and beyond, you can literally just press a button and all your projectors will match. So in streaming mode, we're just simply connecting to the back of the projector over Ethernet from our, our PC. You could be running Quick Show, you could be running Beyond. And what's nice with, with this setup right here with the FB4 SK is we can just daisy chain that signal over to our second, third, fourth projector, and so on. So you could run a single home run from front of house to projector one and just daisy chain and still retain that independent control over each projector. Right, and one of the, some of the keys that we put into our um, into that video that's on YouTube is what you need to actually do on the FP4 to get stream mode go. So first of all, we want Beyond slash QS to be yep. checked. 
Um, and then the best way to make sure you get what you need is you go to network setup, make sure auto IP is checked. That'll just make sure that um, FB4 is doing its best to connect to your computer yep. without doing anything specific. And another thing you can always check is make sure that ScanGuard is disabled. Um, it's a feature that uh, does some sort of some stuff for its for safety. You can the safety video we cover it, um, but it sometimes gives you output that you wouldn't expect uh, if you weren't aware that it was. On. In so most cases, you're gonna, sure you're gonna want to just keep ScanGuard um, disabled. Yeah. It's, so um, if you have those three things checked, you throw in an Ethernet port, Ethernet cable back to the laptop, um, or through a switch, um, and. As long as your computer's IP is on auto IP as well in your network settings, then you should it should show up. And, and the auto IP happen. really, I mean, we've tried to make it as easy as possible to directly connect over uh, streaming mode so that the auto IP automatically detects you're not having to set IP addresses and stuff like that. Yeah, and be, beyond, you, you, and you may have had to do it. It's basically like dash. beyond an FB4 when they're on auto mode is like, they're doing everything they can to look for each other. Exactly. Um, and they're they're looking past IPs that you wouldn't think that it would look for, and it's yep. really going into it deep and just trying his best to find each other. And, and I'll, on that note, I mean, part of the reason um, we've designed it all like this is is with FB4 SK, with the partnership with Kavant, we're really trying to design a fixture that works with the control from end to end, um, with, with the ultimate goal being to make you guys' as lives as, as clients as easy as possible so that setup's a bit faster and easier. You know, time... time it really is money. You know, the faster you can set up and deploy multiple projectors on a stage, the, the, the better off you're going to be. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just convenience, right? I mean, making your life a bit easier. Um, so that that's really a, a large part of why we've built a lot of these features in here. Right. Yeah, and so and then you just plug it into Quick Show or Beyond, and um, it basically will pop up a window. I'm on, we can just show the screen here. Um, basically pop this window up. You'll see the projectors, yeah. and then you can do all your software stuff inside of there. Um, and, and so when you're operating in yeah. streaming mode, you know, this, um, some people might control it over MIDI. Uh, yeah. So streaming mode, MIDI. you could use a MIDI controller with Beyond. Um, you could do, uh, you know, just keyboard yeah. and mouse. Um, you could also get crazy, and you could do, like, Beyond Server, technically, that's streaming yeah. mode. Um, that, because that's sending ArtNet to the computer. You're running beyond. off of a timeline. If um, you could do timeline and time code. Um, and so all those kinds of, the, it's kind of the traditional yeah, this is this is really our technique. classic our right. classic operational mode for lasers. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of progressing from there, you know, obviously a lot more lighting designers are getting into lasers, and uh, over the past three to four years, we we really dedicated a lot of development time to building out what we call our console mode um, setup and configuration and control possibilities. So right. really catering portions of the workflow to those of a lighting designer, and so so kind of on that note you can connect directly to the projectors over DMX or ArtNet. Right, so we have DMX 512, which is just really standard. Obviously, yep. everybody gets it. Um, and then we also have ArtNet, so you can run ArtNet directly to the projector um, and also daisy chain the ArtNet through daisy projectors chain as well. Yep. Um, and like in the ArtNet settings, we have, you can pick your universe, the address, um, whether or not you want RDM, the feedback, yep. if you want to see it as a node, um, its profile and whatnot, and everything in there. And then in your network is network settings in here, network setup. Um, is where you would probably, most of the time with ArtNet, it's a little bit more finicky. Yeah. You yeah. could use auto IP if you're doing for broadcast, it'll probably work. But again, ArtNet is more IP specific usually. So in this case, we can set them all to a static IP. We could change it from auto to static and then set an IP that would make sense for um, for your setup. Mm -hmm. um, and, and profiles yeah. for most of uh, your major consoles out there, MA, Abilites, yep. HOG. And uh, we're slowly going down the list to make sure that every single one is perfectly optimized. Yep. I'm working with Onyx right now. Those guys are great. Um, Big shout out to them for. Yep, for they lent us, us the uh, NX2, yeah. and I let it sit on my yep. desk for a little bit too long, <laughs> and they're being nice with me about that. Um, and so we're we're working on making sure that all these um, basically are, are are set up in the same way, so that um, when when you do go onto the console and you look at our tutorials that might be on MA, um, it'll be as fami it'll be as close as possible mm -hmm. um, as you can to the different consoles. Um, and make sure that we basically provide that information to those manufacturers. Yep. Um, and so we're working with Onyx right now. MA obviously is the it's the most widely used, so we did that one first. Um, Onyx I think is a great platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah for really like so. a lower cost kind yep. of product with you get a lot of value out of those consoles. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm really interested in making sure that those work really well with our products as well. Um, so those who are a another thing to talk about with console mode, and you put a lot of work into this, Lyra, was the content pack. Um, right, that's the other big thing. So now, natively on the SD card that comes inside right. of every projector, you're going to have it's 1500 what we kind of call laser gobos, uh, and these start with everything from simple base shapes and patterns and, and a white color all the way up to 
some really complex and sophisticated and beautiful effects that uh, that Lyra. Spe I mean, you spent weeks programming. Yeah, this I mean, if out. you want to show my screen here, I can show you some of those. Um, this is my workspace. You can see these are the statics. It's not actually every single one. They go all the way out to every color and then into white with a negative space. Um, so there's 240 cues um, for the simples in each page. So yeah. this is 960 cues. It's like more, more than you would probably It's ever plenty. Need. And then you also have these um, other ones. So this is all like sheet looks. There's tons of effects in here. You have uh, waves, different types of waves. And you can still adjust the you can still adjust these cues and stuff if you want to inside of the software. But um, the whole point, the reason for the content pack was this: is um, there's a lot of people who are like, "Hey, I just want to up and running, directly connect from my console and and control the projector. I I don't have time, or I, I you know maybe I'm just not comfortable with learning a new software at this stage. Mm -hmm. We'd always encourage you to use the software, but you might just want to." Stick with this right. you know, console. And these are completely setup. built on from the factory. And so, so you can just directly plug into the projector. No computer in the setup. No software in the setup. You can set up your safety zones. You can set set up um, your geometric correction. Do all that. And then you have this beautiful pack of content that you can work with right out of the box. So, yeah. And I'd also like to say um, huge shout out to Mike Dunn yeah, on yeah, the definitely. content pack. Yep. Uh, lots of the content was done as well by Mike yep. Dunn. Um, and Francesco as well for uh, the cheese, the cheese for helping uh, optimize. The thing that's really special about the content pack is not only is it fifteen hundred cues, but they're almost every single one of them is five hundred points plus or minus. A well, you bit. guys spent. I mean, so what? what took a, time. I mean, that was the bulk of the time. Right. Was was going and op every, every single frame is optimized. Every single cue yeah. is optimized not only for point count but for anchors and for looping so yep. all the loops are perfect some of them are half a second some of them are a minute and, and a and half and if you're long. new to lasers what we really mean by this is um you know if you kind of take a conventional projector it might have some content flashed on its memory system when you project that circle you kind of see gaps in the circle you might see hot points within the circle right it just doesn't really look clean and so when we say we went through and optimized this content lyra francesco they went through every single yeah. cue Point by point, and we tested and it on, it. and we tested it on multiple projectors. We tested yep. it on a compacts at full bore. Yep. We tested it on Saturns on full bore, and we tested it on a lower cost scanner line mm -hmm. at full bore. Yep. And I would say probably there's some stuff that's just isn't going to work on every projector perfectly because every scanner is going to be different. But we probably got probably 95 to 98 mm -hmm. percent of the content looking as it should on exactly. all three yep. at the same time. Which, yeah. which was the bulk of the work, but it, it helps you, it makes it a really beautiful it's effect. Noticeably it's always different. gonna work. Yeah, noticeably it's noticeably different. different. And everything is just about 60 FPS, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, so you kind of can expect your scan rate changes, you can expect how it might look on camera. It's gonna look as you would envision it should have looked. And if, and if you're just a straight Beyond user, you can download this workspace entirely and have yep. all of those cues in Beyond as well. So not only is it just hidden away on an SD card, but it is also, it's actually, available it's actually a workspace available. Yep. Um, and it's 1,500 more beam cues. And that's, that's something that I, I think, think that is really that puts our total exciting. cue count within the software around 3,500 or so. Yeah, we're included for free. <laughs> yeah, included for free. Yeah. Um, but I will say it's a Beyond workspace, not a Quick Show workspace. Um, so if you want access to those cues, you have to have Beyond just because I built it in Beyond because it had all the features I needed to be able to build all the cues. And um, it is, it would take just as long to report it. If back you want to go big, show it. you kind of got to go Beyond. You have to go to Beyond. Um, all right, so the, the final workflow and, and kind of setup configuration I want to talk to is auto mode. And um, when we say auto mode, sometimes people get confused and they'll say, well, you know, this conventional laser that I have has uh, an SD card in it and the manufacturer said it supports auto mode. Is that the same as your auto mode? And the answer is no. Um, so when we say auto mode, what we really mean is that you can go into the software, you can design a show, a cue, an effect, a logo, pretty much any sort of content you can envision. You can upload that to the media server, to the FB4 inside your projector. And then within the software, you can set a day, date, and time for that content to project automatically. And all you need connected is power and depending on where you're located, your safety and e-stop setup as well. And so that is what we mean by auto mode. It's right. not, hey, I've got some cues stored on an SD card that can loop or I can trigger those right. cues. It's a very different between like a DJ auto mode, yeah, which is it, where it it's just not plays the same random thing. content. Where in this case, like, let's imagine you are a haunted house. Yeah. It seems a little bit out of place right now, but let's imagine you're a haunted house. 
right? And you have this one look that you want to do down a hallway, mm -hmm. right? And you, you can't just, afford to have an operator there. Right, you can't. You can't. It's, 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 just, just, it's just a single part of your single, entire thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you could do, create your look on Quick Show, mm -hmm. right? Schedule it to run. You could even schedule it to start at when you open. And when we and say schedule too, close. you can go months, years yeah. out. It's not just like you, you can, can schedule have, for a small period You can period have a daily time. schedule that runs every day except when there's holidays. And, and then you can, you can change day dates and times. You, you can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And all you need is a battery in the FP4, which with quant projectors, they ship with a battery. Included. Exactly. Right. And, and so really the main difference here when we say auto mode is auto mode on other projectors is they have an SD card. There's some content flashed to it. It can run in a loop and you can trigger that content. The, the downside is you can't manipulate that content. You can't go in you can't and edit that what content. It is. Um, if it's open source, what file format can, right. can you upload to it? Can you even upload to it? Mm -hmm. um, you can't set a day, date, and time for it to project. So just be aware, like auto mode can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And when we say auto mode, it means you can control the content you upload. You can manipulate the content as you like. You can set the day, date, and times for that content yeah. to project based on whatever criteria you have. So it really is true control of your auto mode settings. Yeah, and if you can imagine like a, um, a application, like digital signage with like a logo loss, right? Exactly. Like you don't need to have a control, you don't need to have a rack somewhere that's controlling that device, right? It's just, it's an FB4. So you can set the day, date, and time, set your advertising schedule, and, and then you're off and running. Unplug it and walk away. Yep. And you don't even need a rack somewhere hidden away in a closet. You can have this mounted on the side of a building. And especially in times like right now where, you know, let's be frank, we don't have big events occurring and stuff. So as an industry, we're, we're all kind of looking like, well, what can I do with this technology? What, how how yeah. can I differentiate digital signage, guys? Digital, digital signage. signage using yeah. laser as a digital signage uh, medium. It's, it's a huge thing. You know, we exhibited at the Infocom exhibition mm -hmm. and... Um, you, you know, not really a huge exhibition for entertainment lighting in, in a broad sense. Right. We we kind of exhibit, exhibited as a digital signage company. Yeah, and you would, you'd be, you'd be and... shocked at the number of corporate people coming up and asking, can you put my laser in or my logo on Every, laser? Yeah, everything from like really big stuff for like, oh, we have this tower in this yeah. city we want to do to like, oh, I'm a car dealership. Yes, a car, I mean, that's and, a perfect example. Like, that's it, a perfect you example. You have this range of, of clients too that is, you know. It's and like, so that's the point. It's um, right now, there's nothing stopping you from using your projector, using tools like the auto mode feature to go and use your projector as a digital signage product. Right. So just just an idea maybe to, to help you differentiate yourself and, and perhaps get some more business for you um, right now when, when our typical classic types of uh, laser shows are not taking place. Yeah. So another thing that we want to talk about on the, our, the, the Kavant range is also the scanner. So, um, you know, every Kavant projector is coming standard with compact 506s inside. And so it's like, well, what makes a compact 506 different from others? Um, I'll tell you right now, uh, you know, we've got projectors from pretty much every major manufacturer out there. If you put these things side by side and you compare the scan angle from a Kavant to a, a conventional laser projector, you're going to see an exponential difference in the width at which you can project. Yeah. Simply meaning one projector is going to cover a much greater area. Yeah, um, and and uh, technologies like beam brush are only going to work cool. with, with a Kavant. And, and, and the reason being is because we're partner companies. We all worked together to integrate these technologies together to work in yeah. harmony and unison. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the, and the scanner is really the foundation of all of that development. Right. So. I mean, even you think about like the beam brush, like, they did a t bunch of lens tests yeah. for us. They yeah, Victor was, of, was huge. You know, and, and the, we, we, we don't have the throughput enough, like ourselves on our own, to mm -hmm. be able to say, well, and also they designed, a, they're going to design a module around it. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that's the thing. Like they're going to, like without that partnership, we wouldn't be able to do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, like basically build a module specifically for that purpose. It, it's all about technology that works together from end to end. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, and then it's designed around, but we can support pretty much any workflow right now. It doesn't matter if you are a streaming guy, you're a lighting designer, you're an architectural designer, you work at theme parks. These projectors are really meant to be able to set them in any sort of multimedia setup you might encounter, and they're going to work. And they're going to work easily. Uh, you're not going to have to fight to get them to work. Um, it's, it just works, you know, as you as you would hope it would. So uh, we'll open up to questions now. I mean, that's that's pretty much the, the main um, the main elements we were trying to cover today. Uh, again, we're going to have some more um, information coming on the safety-related stuff there as well, and in, um, in, at yeah, some separate I, dates. And I, 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 not to reiterate myself too much, but the uh, the safety videos are something that 
Um, I know a lot of people have wished that there was um, that is, is to exist, um, and the, the, we did. We spent a lot of time on this video to try and make it as as good as possible without getting too deep in the weeds. Because if you get too deep in the weeds, then people aren't going to watch it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So we wanted to try and make it as as consumable as possible. It's demystify. I mean, you know, I I hate to see it, but there's so many people that try to make laser sound like it's this uber complex regulatory process and all this, it, it, you know, we're, we're trying to demystify that. Um, la laser can right. be done safely. It, yeah. it, it's not this infinitely complex uh, process. The variance uh, process yeah. isn't infinitely complex. If, if you take practical, if you use practical common sense, you file the appropriate paperwork, it's not that hard, you know, it's not that hard. And so the safety video really, really helps demystify video, that. It, the safety video covers all those topics to make yeah. sure that like, you know, the stuff that will, that could hurt somebody if used incorrectly. Yep. If you follow the steps in that video, it just basically won't happen. And what's beautiful, and I will say this too, um, you know, covered Ly Lyra, your, you, you, you've covered all the topics. You, you've worked in touring setups, you've worked on yep. permanent installations. TV. Um, you're a certified LSO. And, and not only not only did Lyra work on these, we had um, independent safety consultants review yep. them. So it's not just Pangolin telling you this is our version right. of it. This is reviewed by multiple peers, multiple people within the industry, John Ward being a big one, um, to ensure that, you, you know, this is a consensus of what we believe are right. safe and, practices. And there's, I'm sure there's a couple things that maybe weren't talked about, but, you know, we, we went through a revision We tried process, to hit the, the big right? one, yeah. We wanted to make sure that the big stuff was covered and we don't, the, the uh, with this kind of thing, it's always a battle to try and make sure people keep watching, right? Yeah. And yeah. so... If if it's so deep in the weeds and boring that people don't watch it, then it, it's not worth it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So um, yeah. we basically kind of built it so that if you show up at a job site and you're new to this or you're new to lasers and you want to get know what is required and what you should do, you've got a resource. You have a resource that's a resource. going to get you through. Yep. No, it's not going to talk about every possible zoning application that would take forever. Yes. But what it does do is it gives you the the rules about where you can put your zones. It gives you a couple examples. It tells you the exceptions, like balcony edges, which we talk about in the yep. video. Um, and I mean, it's going to cover those, those bits of information. Ninety percent of ninety percent of the, the the things you might encounter out there in a real world scenario. Right. Yep. And then the 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 last ten percent, or you know, it's like the eighty twenty rule, right? Yes. We couldn't cover eighty percent of the topics in twenty percent of the time, exactly. so we did that instead exactly. because it just seems like the best way to keep attention and also make sure that. Um, the people, because the people who are going to be belligerent with these products aren't going to want to watch a three hour. They're the ones who aren't going to watch. Yeah, well, those, those are the ones we get concerned about. Right, exactly. Yeah. Those are the people. Those that, are the people we get concerned that about. Are, yeah. That are we're worried about, and so this is this definitely is going to be as, as efficient for those types of people as possible. Um, and, and I think on a positive note too, we didn't, you know, this obviously we have a partnership with Kavant and all that stuff, but these these are applicable to anybody. It doesn't matter which projector you're using, yeah. the safety video, e is even very which much. control you're using. You know, yeah. it, it, they, they it's universal principles. Mm -hmm. So we really do hope that these go to benefit uh, every everybody out there. It doesn't matter if you're a Pangolin client, Kavant client, or not. Uh, this was made for the industry. So. Yeah, this this is definitely a from 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 us to the industry. Yeah, uh, uh, something that. A lot of people have always wished existed, but didn't root either. They didn't know how to do it themselves, exactly. yep. or there wasn't a proper incentive, or there wasn't a you know just the the, the pieces hadn't fallen into place. And, and if you have questions on the how to setup stuff, on um, any of the operational modes, on the safety stuff, yeah. ask us. Like doesn't again support we, at pangolin.com. We want to be clear too. Doesn't Compliance matter if you're a pangolin, pangolin customer, Kavan customer. We're we are here to help you inside the industry. Doesn't matter. What yeah. you use, what you work with. We, we want to be there to support you. As long as, if, if, as everybody I'm sure can attest to, if somebody does something wrong, it's going to hurt us it's all. It's going to hurt us all. It's going to hurt us all. So, yeah. this is, while we use quant projectors, obviously, for an example, you know, um, the the shutter, like it's, it's that's the thing that everybody, everybody's got a shutter. Everybody, you know? well, they should. They should, have, <laughs> right. if they're compliant, they, they have a shutter, right? So, yes. um, all of the safety elements that are discussed in that video. It's applicable are to compliance everybody. Things. So yeah. as long as every, as long as the projector is compliant, then they then that video will satisfy the same um, thing. They might they might run over a different cable for their e stop, but you know exactly. It, it's still an e stop system that is going to be quite similar. So um, so yeah. So let's they open it up should, to, to uh, questions here. Sure. Whoopsies. <laughs> um, yeah, let's we can throw. Let's take a look and see what kind of questions we might have covered and. Questions we can maybe start with safety or the those new videos, but otherwise we can open it up after that to kind of whatever. 
So Brett McConnell, uh, you were asking, what are these cues that we were talking about? Um, it's what we call the FB4 content pack. If you go on our website, you can see a couple, if you just type in the search bar FB4 content pack, you'll see a blog post about it. Uh, you'll see resources where you can go and download that content pack. Uh, and just to reiterate, it's 1500 cues, everything from simple base shapes all the way up to complex uh, beam sequences that you can download inside of your Beyond Workspace or download to the to the SD card inside of your FB4 and you're off and running. So um, yeah. if you have any trouble finding them, Brett, just email us, support at pangolin.com. We posted a, yeah, a link I can in even, the thread. If you want to show um, my, I can show you exactly where to get that workspace. Yep. So, uh, oops, not that page. <laughs> Garrett, thanks for you the can shout out on the haircut. To. <laughs> this but, was my, my COVID cut. Yeah, <laughs> self-COVID cut. Self COVID. It's a little hot down here in Florida. Yeah. So if you go to support and you go to um, FB4 series of products, and then in here you should have the FB4 content pack, and then this is the Beyond Workspace here, and then if you for some reason need the zip files with the FB4 files, then those are here. Uh, the manuals here, and then also um, on that note too, Larry, you might show. Online, so one of the things we did. Just, you know, talking about support and stuff, just to even further provide more resources if you're new to lasers is within the support sections of our website, you're going to see how to set up diagrams. Uh, and these are going to document pretty much every possible setup configuration you might encounter. Um, and our new uh, graphic design artist, Josh, is he's updating these um, just to make them a little bit more visually appealing. Um, but these diagrams are going to show you every possible setup. Doesn't matter if you're using an FB3, FB4 uh, external, FB4 integrated into the projector. It's going to show you every control cable, every setup that um, that you may may encounter in there. Uh, it should be under support. Oh yeah. All right. And then um, hardware setup diagrams down there on the left. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that. That's where they are. Yeah. We moved them to a more convenient And place. on that note, <laughs> if you find anything on our website unintuitive, we are going through our whole website, all of them across the company, to try to simplify them. So if you have any feedback there, send yeah, it over. We'd love to hear it. I was looking it. for it in a way harder place <laughs> where it used to be. So this is definitely more. So Calvin, harder. if you can share Lyra's screen, just um, these diagrams are going to, you know, you, you can just see every, every basic setup configuration you might encounter uh, across all hardware platforms that we offer. So Right, um, and how... Um, Control of different projectors yeah. can be different or the same based on how they're set up. Independent versus shared control, that's a that's um, a big question we get. So uh, these kind of speak to that a little bit as well. Yep, for each piece of hardware we have as well. And Yep. And uh, everything like that. Oh, yep. Um, well, I don't see too many other questions coming in. Um, David N. King asking, what's the biggest difference between Quick Show and Beyond? Uh, David, try the demo and watch the videos. Um, you know how I like to explain it? Quick Show and Beyond kind of look similar on their face, but in Beyond, what you realize is that when you go to an option, there's like 40,000 dropdowns that like yeah. give you power, yeah. right? Like you go and you're like, oh, go to settings. And you're like, oh, MIDI, DMX, CITP, what, what's that one? And you know, like there's so much in here. I'll explain it kind of like this too, David. Um, Quick Show is a, it's a great tool if you're new to lasers and you need something that that you can quickly and easily create a pretty a pretty nice and impressive show with. Yeah. Beyond it's is it's great to learn on. Beyond is going to really allow you to interface in larger scale productions and setups. So you yeah. you have more multimedia integrations. Mm -hmm. It supports every major lighting and laser protocol. Right. Instead um, of just quick timeline. It's a pro down the bottom, supports you've got a video video yep. file formats. Your timeline's a lot more robust. Yep. The frame editor's a lot more robust. Right. You have a lot more effect options. So, you know, it's it's you, like with the, like with like here here's a really nice it's like easy it's like example. think about Quick Show kind of as like a Toyota Camry and Beyond is uh, a Mercedes Benz AMG. I mean, you know, just to kind of put it into context, they, they also, are night and day different. Yeah, and um, also something like the frame editor. This is the frame editor that you have in Quick Show. And this is the simple frame editor, right? I could, in a quick hint, explain this in like two yeah. minutes, right? But it took me 10 minutes to even barely touch the surface of the advanced frame editor, which is what is in, be which is in mm -hmm. Beyond Advanced. And it is. And just in terms of the frame editor, I mean, think about, you know, Quickshow's frame editor is like, one it's feature. like paint. It's like yeah. paint. And the one inside of Beyond, think about it like as a Photoshop, Photoshop type right. program. So, And that's one window out of yeah. hundreds of windows inside of Beyond, which are either new and added or are 
improved mm -hmm. and with ex extra features like like the uh, frame editors are. Let's see if we have any more questions in here, guys. Um, can you guys do an overview of the internal workings of a couple of the most popular modders you distribute from Kavant? Um, right now, no. <laughs> yeah, but, well, we, uh, we that's a great done. idea that's for a great our, idea for a future a bit, live for stream. Future just kind of, kind of. Or a live stream, yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, we could we could bust open um, an, an internal so you can kind of see what's going on inside the fixtures. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, one of the I things, don't have my tools, but <laughs> one of the things that you, you'll notice that makes a Kavant special is is the beam, right? I mean. Um, I've said his name a few times now, Dr. Victor Dubeck. This guy, um, I mean, he's phenomenal at the design and construction of a module. The beam divergence and the power density from a Kavant is, is really kind of second to none. When you, If you were to line one of these up side by side with some other conventional lasers and look at that beam after about 100 feet or, or 30 meters or so, that's when you're really going to start to see the differences. Um, yeah, and there's even small design things that I've learned later on that I'm like, whoa, just that's clever. Just convenient stuff, right? I mean, just look at the aperture, how easy it is, to, you know, instead of having to screw down and scrub, you've just got one little knob right, right here. Right, and it's hidden. It's not actually going the, to rip off. You don't, have, you don't have you pain know. in the butt flags on the side that get crimped in your flight case and stuff. You just got these nice, easy knobs that you can use and conveniently adjust your yoke. There's... There's a lot of design aesthetics that go into the fixture that make it different as well um, from a usability standpoint. So um, so those are just some of the differences. I mean, as you get inside of the projector, every module is protected with Lazorb. So on every single diode, there's a Lazorb component protecting it. Mm -hmm. People yeah. may overlook the value of that, but when your projector dies early uh, because it didn't have Lazorb, then you'll be like, kind of wish I had that. Or it's, you lose module yeah. over time. Or you're starting to lose brightness from your, your, your color projector. Balance is just when you see wrecks. the width of the projection angle, when you see the um, the power density of the beam. So like w one thing, you know, I often get is, well, well their, their laser is, says it's uh, six watts and yours is only three. Theirs must be brighter, right? Not always the case. Power is not only defined by, it's it's not only brightness raw power. Is, brightness is not defined it's by power. It's power really. density, it, right? It's an aspect to it. It's a exactly. facet to it. It's power density. But if your beam is smaller and your power and your divergence is better, How it's much be power do I have in a smaller specified area, right? And you can even attest to me when I came on and I was getting more time with yeah. once. I was like, there's no way that a six watt is yeah. doing and... I've been proven wrong. A it's, great, it's, a great guy who, who who demonstrates surprising. this often is uh, Brooks Palmer from Full Color. This guy used the six waters on main stage Imagine Music Festival. Now he had some some higher power twenties behind it, but this he, he flooded the stage with six water and it looks phenomenal. If you look yeah, at some of the video footage and stuff, like that, so honestly surprising. It's I, not. I've, um, been, I've been surprised many times by how how much better the, the beam how much the beam matters to like overall brightness and. And yeah, penetration over time and distance, yep. and just looking like more than you think it would, mm -hmm. um, especially when you compare power to power, right? Yeah, yep, that's like the thing. I've seen I've seen six watts go up against you know what is a ten watt or or twelve watt, watt or yeah, yeah, um, and you know maybe in maybe right up close it might be a little bit weirder or different, but you know once you start actually it's putting them in a real life situation, you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. Yep, you'll see the difference. So. Uh, Let's see if we have any other questions uh, in here within the group. Um, so Giovanni, great question. So what about CITP? Is it possible? Is there an example? And greetings from the Laser Systems Europe family. So first, uh, good to hear from you guys and gl glad to hear that you're joining us on the live stream. We appreciate it, Giovanni and uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, CITP, we've got it. It's been integrated into Beyond for a while now. Uh, we've got some tutorials online about that. Um, if you have any questions on that, Giovanni, just shoot us over an email to support at pangolin.com. But CITP definitely supported now for, I would say, about a good six months. I think yeah, we about six that, months. About the um, last LDI was when we we made that announcement. I am almost certain it's on here somewhere, but there's definitely a quick hints video um, that goes over CITP mm -hmm. and shows you everything you would um, need to I uh, need to do to do that. And there's also a full manual. Um, that yep. I wrote that covers it all, and also so if you if you English is not your first language, then you can use the yeah. You know that's a good point, Larry. One, one thing um, as well for yeah. our for our friends across the world who are not native English speakers, um, Lyra has dumped her heart and soul into making these quick hints videos for you guys. Um, I mean, she's working on it day at night on weekends, and in addition to that, we have had them translated into. Uh, so most of I'll the common you, languages. I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here on my computer. Um, this is how I track all of our videos. 
um, their progress, if they're in progress, um, what's been filmed, what is intending to be filmed. And over here is our translations. Yep. Right? So on YouTube are captions for all of these things. So we have English and German is completely done. Yep. On Quick Hints Basics. We're working on Chinese right now. Uh, we have uh, Eric Russian, working on Spanish. Russian is almost done for basic. We have two more videos. Yep. Igor is working on Igor's that. Igor's working on those. Um, Spanish. Eric's working on Spanish. Um, Big shout out to, to Thomas Avisi, our, uh, our French brother from, a, from another mother. He's been uh, hammering out those French translations. So French has been hammering out. French is done completely for we're Quick working on, Basic. Um, we're going to be working on Italian pretty soon. We've got some partners over in Italy from Audio Effetti. Who, um, who we might be working with to translate those. So that, that's going to be another Yeah, language. and we're working to try and um, fill as many of these as possible, yep. um, especially with like the like um, the United Nations seven languages yep. as well, because that's like another thing that's like... Yeah, it's, 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 tough, it's, to, super... it's tough to hit every single language just because we, we don't have all those resources in-house. If you have time and, and you can help us translate videos, you know, and you need some additional work, all of, everybody right. who's helping is it's, it's being it's a paid activity. Right. Um, so yeah, if you're really interested in translations, yeah. and the hard part about the translations is that um, which ones do we still need? I think Polish right now is one that we're Polish looking for. should be one. So that if would anybody be really out great. there can help us translate these uh, videos into Polish, we're, we're looking, looking for somebody to help uh, there. Portuguese is another big Portuguese. One. Portuguese. Portuguese. Yep. We're looking for Polish, um, Japanese, and Korean would be really great to have as well. Yep. Um, and the thing is, is like. If the hard part about finding translators for this is mainly the fact that um, there's terms that are industry specific, Correct. so yeah. um, it's it's not like we can just go and hire someone on Fiverr to go do this. Yeah, I mean, we wanted they to, would not have. A, we wanted to put out quality translations, right, ones that ones that um, are industry specific. And yes, yeah, so like you're saying, it's I tough to find who's those. Polish, those. and she gave it a try, and she's like, I just I don't know what any of these words yeah. are. Yeah. So um, that's why we're really looking for people in our community and in our industry to help um, do those translations. So if you think you can help us with those translations from like German, Korean, or sorry, not German, you, you three, Japanese, huge Korean. shout out, man. Yes, absolutely. Arabic. It's one of the ones we've Arabic been. Arabic is uh, another one that we've been looking. We've for the been right looking one. for somebody. So if you have time, brother, we would we would be forever grateful Shoot for that. Shoot me an email, Lyra at pangolin.com. L Y R A. And, and, and David, um, I would love to. Uh, David King. Yes, absolutely. If you. Um, Pangolin qualified to be an essential business, so we, we are still open right now. And if uh, you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one training, um, yeah, contact us. We can set up some dates and times uh, with you. Um, so absolutely, you can come get first-hand first, uh, first experience with the projectors, with the technology. We've got um, uh, two studios here in Orlando now, one on the west side of town, one on the east side of town. So yeah, we'd love to have you, brother. For sure. So let's see what else we've got in here, guys. And I mean, if it's just two people in the studio, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, cool. I, I'm not seeing too many other questions in there. So uh, I, I think we're going to wrap this live stream up um, again. We're, we're really trying to make a, a big effort to put these out um, as much as we can. So we're, we've got some plans for other ones related to, to safety. Maybe yep. if you um, guys from the community have anything else you want to see again, we're always asking, send us, send us your requests, send them through Facebook. You could email Justin at pangolin.com, Lyra at pangolin.com, yep. Calvin at pangolin.com. But just let us know what you want, guys. We are here for you right now. Um, you know, just trying to put out a positive message in the industry. So Yeah. And um, and I could make a guess at what you want, but yeah, exactly. you should yep. just tell us because then it's yep. going to get exactly what you want. And we we did a survey a little while back. Yeah, great feedback from that. There was some great feedback from great there. Great feedback from that. Um, and... I'm also working on some expert quick hint scripts. Yep. Um, there's not going to be as many as intermediate, but um, so those are going to be coming soon. And it's all just and again, keep it moving. If you're, if you're staying at home, take those lasers out. Do something fun. Map out some toilet paper like Austin Smith did. It yeah. Put, or it put a smile can, on thousands yeah. of people's faces. Right. Right. And you know? or or we can use it for messaging. Yes. Or, or practice by mapping yep. your own house or your own kitchen. You know, if you can't, if you have an apartment, in exactly. Your own kitchen. There you go. So, um, so uh, definitely um, keep it keep we'll, it up, guys. We'll, we'll end uh, it with the same mantra we've been trying to promote, guys. We want you to stay safe, stay positive, and stay educated. So uh, if you have any other feedback you'd like to shoot over to us, feel free to share it in the feed. But uh, we're going to close this one down, and we, we thank you all for joining us again. And uh, we might have some fun live streams here coming soon uh, as well, just to, just yeah, to light, we're, lighten we're, the load. We're almost um, – I don't want to say we're – we're we're not numb to the situation, yeah. But we um, 
now that we're kind of used to doing the precautions and taking care of ourselves and yeah. making sure our family is okay, we're a little bit eager to do some some more silly stuff. Yeah, just ha- just have some fun. As right? long as we keep it safe, which we yeah. always will try our best to do, um, we will uh, we want to we want to try and we've gotten ourselves relaxed, right? Yes. We've figured out the situation we're in. Yep. Um, and now let's 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 yep. try and ha- make the best out of it. And uh, all right, Pangolin family. Well, we appreciate everyone, and thanks for joining us on the live stream. And we will see you next time.